Welcome to the Tacoma Dome in Tacoma, Washington. The WIAA Network presents the 2012 WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Les Schwab Tires 3A Boys Basketball Championships. Welcome back to the Dome and our all-day coverage of Championship Saturday. Bob Akami and Dave Harshman back with you for the Boys 3A Championship. And we don't need to say much else. Beach and prep, fourth time this year. Sit back and enjoy. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this because it's not like, hey, wait a minute, have we played you guys a few times? <laughs> and if we haven't, you sure look familiar. It I is mean, the it, 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 it's, And it's a contrast. It's not that, that prep will not try to run, but Beach will really try to run. One well, Saturday and it's the night. two best teams in the Metro League maybe playing their best uh, basketball yet. And uh, we take a look first at Rainier Beach, which uh, made it through with the help of a lot of different pieces. You know, everybody thought Rio Adams was going to come in, take over the team this year. And it's really to the Vikings' benefit that they didn't. And throughout this tournament, it's been somebody different every night. The little guard, Mosley, has uh, really pushed a lot of the right buttons through these first two games. They've really done a nice job, and he gets the ball to other people. And that, that's important. You know, I, I always say this, and you've heard me. You got to run with a purpose and you got to know what you're going to do when you get the ball to the air to the floor. And of course, when you talk about prep, you talk about Mitch Brewey. He has, of course, set almost every uh, statistical mark in Seattle prep history. Set that scoring mark. I was going to do what Eric Bond did throughout his career there, but he's also had a lot of help. And a very familiar last name, Fenner, DJ Fenner, has really risen up as the outside force. So many teams try to take Mitch away inside, they forget about what prep has on the outside. Yeah, and, and I think a, a really nice compliment for each other. DJ's developing his outside game more and more, becoming a more consistent shooter. I would say 17, 18 feet. Not that he can't shoot to the three, but it's really nice to have that kind of a, an inside-outside four so you don't have to necessarily go one or the other. And, of course, yeah, we got the Division One guys. Mitch Brewey headed to UC Santa Barbara, and Rayo Adams has uh, committed, at least verbally, to the University of Kansas. You'll love what they do on the basketball four. Fourth meeting of the year. Beach won the first two regular season and the Metro playoffs. But in the Sea King final, it was prep. I don't know if that's momentum now. When you play for the fourth time, what, what creates the momentum? Well, you know what? That really didn't have a lot to do with it. I mean, I'm not saying Beach didn't go after the game, you know. But this is the big one, you know. And we've had some great games already, the sure. first two games of the day. And I think you're going to see the same kind. I don't think it's going to be a run runaway one way or the other. I think it's going to come down to the end. I don't know if it's going to be a last-second shot like the last game. But I think it's going to be one uh, up-tempo. But we don't have the good shot. We're going to throw it inside. We're going to try to grind it out and get good shots. All right, let's make the starting lineups for tonight, and we're going to start with Rainier Beach, who have been the visitors every game of the tournament. Marquise Davis and Rayo Adams, Will Dorsey, Dewan Piper, and Elijah Foster, the starting lineup. And the coach, he's been there, won that. Mike Bethea in his seventh year, 2008 state champions. He said he was bringing out the Versace tonight, but very understated. No flashy tie or anything. It's going all Pat Riley old school. Well, I told Mike after the game yesterday, I thought it was really good the way he let the other team get ahead and it came out second half. <laughs> Made it exciting. <laughs> yeah. Seattle Prep, of course, led by Jackson Club. Michael Phillips, the glue guy in the backcourt. G.J. Fenner and up front, Mitch Brewey. And the next guy we'll be talking about in Seattle Prep, Josh Martin, yeah, rising Josh, star in just his sophomore year. Yeah, got a, lot of, uh, got a lot of potential, which, you know, sometimes as a coach, that's one of the worst things you can say. A kid's got a lot of potential because a lot of guys never reach it. But I think this kid will. And there's the coach, Mike Kelly. Coach the 2006 state champions. Here we go. Beach prep. Fourth time this year. Seattle prep. That's got to be the whole student body over on the fourth side. Ready to go for the state championship. Nice crowd here. I, I, I love the atmosphere. There's our referees for tonight. Eric Cheatley, Hap Fakama, and Jason Andrew will blow the whistles. Already we've crowned two 4A champions in the state of Washington. Now the 3A boys title up for grabs. Rainier Beach and Seattle Prep ready to get it on. Beach the visitors in the orange. Prep the home team white and blue. And the tip is won by Martin. And they go immediately inside to Brewey. And there's Fenner in the follow-up. So there's the example. Brewey's the target, but Fenner's been the guy backing him up. Well, the thing I've noticed in both the earlier games is people are jumping to the board or coming to help, and at least somebody open. Nobody's getting the body on people, and you really got to cut Fenner and Brewery and those kind of guys off the glass. Now 
Running attack for Rainier Beach. Marquise Davis, strong rebound inside, and then Brewey slaps it away out of bounds, but it'll still be a beach ball. And there's Elijah Foster, the sophomore, who's really having a nice tournament. Yeah. You can, when we saw him earlier in January, I mean, this is a different guy. Maturity -wise. Totally, but I, I like the fact that he goes strong and tries to get the ball with two hands, and Mitch Brewery came up. Good help. Very good rebounder, and he's played good tournament ball as usual, the tournament physical, and he's held his spot. Nice move underneath by Rio Adams. But the foul comes on the rebound, and it goes against Beach. Well, there again, Brewery, a force inside. I don't know if he got a hand on it, but at least he barred the shot. Then he goes, when he gets his hands on the board, you're not going to take it away from him. You know, it'll be interesting how he makes his mark as a college player, because, of course, he's been a dual guy. Now he's, does he become more of a defender rebounder well, playing in the Big West? I think I think initially that's going to be his role, and then anything he gets offensively is going to be a plus. And of course, he moves so well, can create his own shot, get away from the basket. Pass to the middle, tipped out, still in play. There's the turnaround, and look how smooth Josh Martin starts out. Is that a good omen? Four nothing early from Prep. Ball loose on the floor. Prep with the takeaway. And it's Fenner calling the shots. Trapped from behind. Look at Fenner hanging on to that basketball. And he'll get called for the travel as he rolled the uh, rear end. Something very interesting on in the turnover down the other end. Every time Adams gets the ball, they're shouting something. I couldn't exactly hear what, what it was. But they're playing. The man on him to contain him and the next person over like a help position so they can go help him if he puts the ball on the floor and tries to get to a seam. I think it's smart. They got they got Fenner on him now. Right there trying to go high low, but Prep did a good job because Martin got out and got his hand up on the, in the passer's face. Now we see a little bit of the beach pressure. Something certainly the prep said it would do. Remember, this is a team that faces O'Day more than once during the year. Good idea, a little hard on the pass that time. Here's the push. Quick release, nothing but net for Davis. And Davis ready on the wing, knowing if there was penetration, he was going to get the ball. And here goes the pressure. And is that a second foul on Adams? No. No. He avoided Dorsey. that one. That's going to be Dorsey. Nice penetration, great dish, great explosion up into his shot. I, you heard me say it before. As long as you're ready when you catch the ball, you've got a great chance for the ball to go in. That bodes well for Prep when he hits a three. Well, Prep's had all their offensive weapons in play. Fenner, Brewey with position. I mean, we kind of talked about this. Prep, Beach is going to have to really force the issue in this game like that. Be aggressive. Great. Go great. after the basket and, and pressure in the backcourt. Yeah. Right then, though, they overplayed him. He went back door through the lob and, and Adam finished. Fenner again, off the glass, didn't quite get the kiss. And a good rebound for Beach. Very good rebound, and they get the ball out very quickly. Oh, and hold on to your shorts, Dorsey. Dorsey. Faked out about 50 people in the crowd with that. Yeah, a little shake, a little juke, and split two defenders and kissed it off the glass. All even at seven. Midway through the first quarter, good start to this game. We expected basketball entertainment, and we're getting it. And the whistle's blowing freely here early in the game. I didn't see who it was on. I think number 12 he said. It's on Dorsey. Oh, well, no, check it. It's on uh, Clough, quarterback. Jackson Clough, second-team All-Metro quarterback. Prep had a great football season, and 
came within one two-point conversion of uh, knocking off O'Day. That great rivalry. Turn over there. And into the game for prep, Angelo Marchesini. And he's he's given him good strong minutes off the bench, and he's got a, he's got a uh, good shot and strong to get into the paint. Well, they talk about Phillips being the glue guy. They call Angelo the bench glue. Angelo gets it underneath. Fenner can't score. Found the rebound as Brewey hits the deck. Fenner not happy with himself for missing that. Easy chippy, but Brewery doing a good job of cleaning it up and get a chance to get two. Ryan Kandek is also in now for prep. 5'10 senior. So Brew goes to the line. He's pretty much good at everything. You know, guys over 50% from the field. Well, you know, we both know his father. He was a very, very good player. Division II All-American, I believe, at UPS. And... Uh, this kid is a, a quality young man, and he, I think he's going to have a nice career in college. There's a lot of people question his speed and quickness, but you know, he's going to get better. Well, I think he's gone to the right spot. That's a three-pointer for Beach, Marquise Davis. I think getting in the Big West, that's about the right league for him. I think it is. Because the things he does with his size make him outstanding. Now look at that. Taking right. a bump and hit the three. Yeah, right there. And before that, that was Davis's second three. So the offense is cranking at both ends. Looks like Fenner gets the foul. Well, for those of the listening or watching that don't know, Fenner's father is uh, Derek Fenner. They played for the Seahawks. And uh, I don't believe this young man plays football. Is that correct? Don't know. He's having one of his... Best basketball seasons at 18 points against Kamiakin in the semis and 16 of them in the second half. Kamiakin was a quality football team. Fouls on Fenner, and that's his second, so that's an early problem for Prep. You know, in the, in the, in the championship games, I always say somebody is going to step up. You know, you got to talk to your team about the fact that everyone on this bench has got to be ready because at some point we're going to call on you. Not to go in and be a hero, but just to come in and give us good, solid minutes. And if you're open, you got to take the shot and you knock it down. We saw Mike Bethea giving uh, Davis a little instruction over there. Beach really putting pressure on the ball on the guards. See what happens, I, I call that funneling. You funnel them to the basket because they're so quick, they rotate, and then there's three guys there to greet the ball. Off of the free throw line. And it's a one point game. Dorsey. In the offense. You know, with all the guys that can handle the ball on this team, he really becomes the guy you want to both bring it down against pressure and at least start the offense. And not bad delivering either. No, there's, there's, there's why. And Foster will get that and get to the line. I'll tell you what, the two bigs, the two young kids for, uh, for Beach are doing a great job of going to the board. And when, when, you're, when you're playing against guys that are great jumpers and great anticipation off the board, you've got to make sure you get a body on them because you're just not going to be able to jump with them. They're going to out-jump you, and they're going to get their hands on the ball. You know, we're not seeing uh, early in this game Fuquan Niles, who 
He's also getting a lot of minutes. He's six foot nine and even a little rawer than Foster is. Right. Both have so much skill. So uh, get ready to watch that show the next couple of years. And that's the scary thing about Beach is how young they are. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to, to Lad coming in the game too. So I used to dream about being quick like that. <laughs> It'll be a Rainier Beach ball. Prep will go to the bench. Phillips comes back in. Replacing Marchesini. Kane Deck out. Here's Lawrence Hicks. Who was really big early in. Then got the flu and really lost a lot of energy and kind of fell out of the mix for a while. Right. Just a sophomore though. You know. He had a Both huge teams have good young players. Well, you know, uh, Prep went down. They always play in a big tournament. They played at the Mission Prep Classic at uh, Christmas, and they beat the best team in Arizona, Desert Vista, and Hicks just lit them up for 28 in that game. Rainier Beach goes to the bench. Naeem Ladd. The next generation of lads at Rainier Beach. Gets some significant minutes. Here's Martin going to the hoop. Gets into Foster in the palace call. A nice set play. You know, uh, one thing, and, and of course, everything's, you know, philosophical, but Beach will press you, but then allow you to go get the ball, and then expands the man down the floor. And so the question for me is, why do we do that? You know, ho maybe hoping to pick one off every now and then, you know, make a steal, but you also, when you're playing on a 10-foot bigger court, you can wear yourself out quickly. Martin at the line. You know, he played, we're talking about him as a sophomore kind of emerging, but he played, he had a few starts as a freshman. Yeah. And obviously, you know, great, great combination of 6'8 skills. I mean, he takes a jump shot. It's about coming down on the basket. Yes. I love Dorsey's push. Yeah, I, I, I'm one of those kind of guys. You push the ball, try to score in a, a spread court. You don't have it, set it up and run your offense. That's his third three. What, three for three, I believe, and he really elevates in his shot. That is the case. Davis three for three. He's 0 for two from two point range. That night. Boy, bumper cars on the rebounds there. Brewy loses the battle to Foster. Beach in the four court. Can't finish it. And it goes back to prep. Not only that, Brewy got stepped on. He's, he's talking to the fish. He's looking at the official. And, you know, what, what was that license plate of that truck that ran over <laughs> me? Well, I believe it was 15. Now, watching him and Foster, this is a nice matchup. But I'll tell you, Foster is handling himself well. He is doing a really nice job, and he's staying on his on, on the ground, on his feet. He's not going for any fakes. Matched up in this pressure as Brewery drifts back to midcourt. Some time fall away in the key. No. And Foster did a good job on him. There's the putback in. Michael Phillips. Not Great always the biggest score. He gets the steal. Gets it back. Final 20 seconds of the first quarter and prep trying to tie it back up. And they've run that play pretty, pretty fairly successfully today, and they've either scored or gotten a foul on it where they dribbled the ball to the wing, set a back pick, and cut the guy at the top of the key to the basket. That time, now they're going to shoot a couple. That'll be Martin getting to the free throw line. Yeah, you got Martin and Hicks and Fenner coming back next year, and you got Mar Marcianisi. Who's, a, who's a, just a junior also. It's Mark Jacini. Yeah, I'm all tight. Well, I didn't call him Marciano anyway. Yeah. But, you know, they've got some They've got some nice yeah. players. Both teams do. They're going to be brewy but not in despair. 
I mean, I would guess with the attorney, I, Rainier Beach is going to be ranked number one preseason. Well, you know, Rainier Beach only has two seniors. Yeah. They, they got a lot coming. But, I mean, it just means, you know, Metro League will still revolve around these two. See Martin, a little lack of confidence in his free throw. Dorsey out of the backcourt. Nice floater. Puts the lead back to four as the first quarter comes to an end. Well, it's everything we hoped it would be. Rainier Beach, winner of two out of three between these two during the rest of the year. A four-point lead after the first period. You're watching the WIA 3A Boys Basketball Championship. Rainier Beach 19, Prep 15 on the WIA Network. One Saturday night, someone went through town slashing tires. Sunday morning, one of Andy Spencer's customers at Les Schwab went to Andy's house to see if he could help. You got it. Andy got in his truck and drove up and down the streets, helping anyone who needed it. He worked at it pretty hard most of the day. That's all of them. Andy didn't tell anybody no. He really went above and beyond his duties as a manager and a neighbor. I'm James Hamilton, and that's my Les Schwab story. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. Raider Beach Vikings coming out of the huddle. They have a four-point lead at the end of the first quarter. Bob Akami and Dave Hartstrom at the Tacoma Dome. Beach 7 of 15 for the field. Three of three from beyond the arc. That's all Davis. Prep is 5 of 11. They're perfect from beyond the arc. Penner and Brewey each have one. Rebounding 12-6 in favor of Rainier Beach. Now, they're getting the offensive boards. They just haven't gotten a lot of footbacks. Yes, they are. In the last play, you know, I, I got to make a comment because if you go out and pressure somebody quicker than you at midcourt and then you allow him to get into the paint, something good is going to happen for the offense, and it did that time. And there's Davis. Davis thinks he's supposed to make all those shots. <laughs> Shoot the ball with confidence, uh, young man. He's stroking it. Forget about confidence. Like, oh, I always uh, Of course I make it. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I'm supposed to make these, aren't I? That's why I shoot them. Better. Ooh, and a late whistle. And Piper picks up the foul. Piper is so long at 6'6". He gets called for a lot of fouls because I don't think people believe he can reach and deflect the ball or block it. Well, you know, the one thing that I would say... He can play over Fenner, but I would maybe take a half a step back because when you get right up on somebody, they have a tendency to go around you and use your body, you know. So, you know, you can do that and then make him, you know, because you are longer, make him shoot it over your hand. He's probably going to be short, and you're not going to get called for the foul. So Fenner at the line. His first free throws of the game. Rui comes back in after a break. Needed that. Better 11 of 17 already in two plus games, not 12 of 18 in the tournament. He's going to get to the line. Yeah, he can do that. Look up the floor. Benner got a good look, although it was a little tight quarters. And you notice Brewey has uh, changed jerseys. So he must have gone out with some blood. Brewey now wearing number 22. Yeah, and Phillips, you know, makes a nice steal, but he's either looked at the floor, they would have had an easy one. So Brewey's now tangling with Fuquan Niles. <laughs> Out of the frying pan into the fire, an even bigger big. Now he's not going to be able to chase Brewery around as much. So I'll be surprised if Mitch gets away from the hoop, but Fenner, you got to keep him from getting to the hoop. Fenner's really working hard off the dribble, and he's making good decisions getting to the basket. You know, as good as um, Mitch Brewery is, a lot of times he's not. Uh, what do I want to say? Selfish enough. You know, good players got to be a little selfish because the teams are better when the ball's in their hands. He's, and, I, and, and I say that because he passed up like about a 17-footer and he was open. 
And early in the year, in fact, Mike Kelly shared that with us early in the year. Uh, Mitch did not shoot much during the early season, and he mentioned that, that he was a little concerned that you know, don't be too much of a team player. Sometimes we need you to be the man and, and go inside and be strong. The two-point game, timeout call with 6.57 to go in the first half. We're going to get a uh, dairy lesson at halftime. A Shannon, dairy lesson. Shannon Rodifer, the Washington State Dairy Ambassador from Snohomish, will be here. Will she bring us a milkshake? I don't know. I, we asked for milk and cookies. Very good. Because if you're going to have cookies, you got milk. Yes, very good. Let's talk about uh, Mitch Brewery and his spot as we take a look at the Seattle Prep Huddle. There, there's three big-time players that have come out of prep. And, of course, the first one was Eric Bond, who scored bazillion points, uh, or 1,894 to be precise. That is a bazillion, though. 2001, went on to Cal, then it ended up at St. Mary's. Uh, he was, of course, the top scorer of all time. Mitch will be the top rebounder. Then you got Spencer Hotz. We all know about him. Great inside player and scorer. Having a nice year until he got hurt in the NBA. And then you got Martel Webster, spectacular offensive player and spectacular athlete for high school. Now that the Mitch Brewery era is ending, who's, who's the best? Uh, well, I look at a couple ever? things. Um, Bond, as I remember, was a lot like Mitch. He's a, he was a worker. He's a guy that, you know, he, he looked to score, but he worked really hard. At, at being, uh, you know, a positive score right there. You see Mitch doing a job defensively. Martell, he, he was just an unbelievable athlete and a high school scorer. I mean, he, he should have made guys, put him on his back, take him to the state title, which he didn't. But, but Haas did. You know, he was the only one that won the state title. So they were all a little different, and they brought something positive to the game. And, you know, I'm a ring guy, so that would put me in the direction of Haas, all things being equal. Nice float by Ladd. Well, you know what? How many times do you get an opportunity not only just to play for a high school championship or a college championship, let alone win it? You know, and th those, are, those are very, very precious. Take away, look out for this. Marquise Davis, boy, what a start to the game for him. Four three-pointers, 14 points, and Prep takes the timeout because suddenly they're down six. Well, my question is, didn't he know he was supposed to pull up and shoot the three? <laughs> I don't know. He's been effective just about anywhere. And you talk about confidence. He looks good. He looks really good. 5'9", Jr., and here it is again. Now watch the pressure. It's Ladd. Ladd's done a good job on the press, getting in the ball's face and redirecting well, it. Even though that they played each other, this is, what, the fourth time? You know, sometimes you forget how quick, you know, Beach is and, and, you know, and they anticipate so yeah. well and they get their hand in the passing lane. But, you know, lane. and here's two guys, you know. Lad exactly. gets in there, changes the passing lane, yep. and then it's off to the races. Well, and that's the thing, you know, you can play. There, there's always a debate between pressure defense and containment defense. And I think when you're not as quick, you play containment. But if you can get the, def the, the ball handler to pick the ball up, now you really get in him. Now here's the pressure from Beach, and they can put pressure. And here's Lad again challenging the ball. Took his headband on, so he's even quicker. <laughs> Lighten him up. He's lighting up already. And look, they force another one. It Niles throws it ahead. And another turnover in a basket. This time, Will Dorsey. And Dorsey says, thanks for the pass. That was way to look up the floor, big man. And here's the repeat. This will go back to prep. You know, this is what Mike Mathia was talking about this early in the season. He didn't know how this team would come together. He knew we had a lot of talent. He said, maybe we're the team of next year. But it's come together fast, and adding Adams obviously was huge. Although you notice how much of a role is he, uh, they haven't needed him in this game. Well, it's nice because I think they feel that they've got a team, not just a one-man gang, you know, and he can be a special player, uh, but he's in foul trouble today. So somebody picks you, like we always say, somebody picks up the slack. Well, and he got in foul trouble on the semi, got his fourth foul early in the third quarter turned into a cheerleader and the young guys took over strong move by Brewery it's blocked out for the rebound but that's what I'm talking about he's got to do more of that they got to give him the ball in deep like that action at the other end I heard a little smack but we get no whistle Rep comes back here's Clough Brewery's in the corner sees the open man Kane deck at the top Prep, prep, prep had some good, they they've had, some good, they've had some good looks at the basket. However, the previous three or four attempts or, or times down the floor, they've coughed the ball up. And that's the thing, you know, 
when you call a timeout, you settle them down and say, listen, we just need to get a good shot every time down. When we do that, we're going to be fine. Inside of five minutes in the first half. Eight point Lee. This has been the largest of the game. And Fenner. Well, and Fenner's hands a little more now. He hasn't seen many touches lately. Brewey, though, leaves it off for Phillips who connects. See, and that's what Brewey can do. You you try to you try to get in his grill, he'll find somebody who's open. The answer at the other end, Davis. He has he missed a shot? Has not missed a shot, has uh, he? He's six of nine. Oh. But he's four for four. Well, you gotta get him out of there, missed three shots. Yeah. 16 points and an assist so far. Brewery playing with a uh, big, big uh, bandaid on his chin. I don't know if you can see it. It's flesh colored, so he must have got that when he got knocked down. And I'm sure that's how the blood got on the jersey. Again, he switched numbers. If you're watching and wondering where 21 is, he's 22. Dorsey to the corner. Lad in a bad spot, and Brewery rejects him. Right, without jumping. Now he'll try the three. He looks a little weary right now. You know, yeah, he does. He looks a little heavy legged, but you know, the, when the ball comes down like that, and it's not that that was a bad shot at all. You know, he's your star. You can live with that. However, maybe you take and make an extra pass or two and get an even better shot because you really haven't made the defense work at all. We brought the ball down, made one pass, and we shot a three. Now if it goes in, hey, great shot. <laughs> but I, like I said, it wasn't a bad shot, but maybe at that point in the game it was not the shot you wanted because you're down eight. But so. he's made some good decisions passing. Oh, he, he really he's got has. some assists. But you notice who hasn't seen the ball lately is Fenner. And so, you know, it, 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 Offensively, you want to get everyone you know, involved in it, but you got to make sure that you know who your bread and butter guys are. Well, Brewery's one for eight right now. Yeah. Fenner's three of seven. Now they're bringing Martin back in, and I'd like to get him going offensively. Although he needs help, you got to give him the ball. Yes. He's still young enough. He doesn't always ask for it. He's got to play, you know, I'd say eight feet and in. I mean, he could step at the free throw line, but still, I mean, that's. He's not a consistent shooter from there. He's, he's got to play at the basket. Right back out on the floor. It's championship night, the end of the winter sports season. We're crowning four state champions of the Tacoma Dome, four state champions in the Yakima Sun Dome, and four state champions. And, and then the Spokane big, Veterans Arena. And the big and game tomorrow, my Spartans versus o o Ohio State. And all those games, not the Michigan State, Ohio State game, all those Washington championship games on the WIA network. Just yeah, click yeah. around our website, and you'll find them all tonight. So now, I think I asked you this, but my son can get this game in Singapore. Yes, he can. Yeah, I love it. There's the lob too far. Look at that save and bounce. The athleticism of Martin ends up resulting uh -oh. in a beach basket, and Martin hit hard on the edge of the floor. Boy, I hate to see that. This morning, I didn't get here in time to watch, watch the Bellarmine, uh, but their big guy got, got hurt, too. Well, this is going to come into your here living he comes. room. Look at the save he makes. He lands just at the foot of our camera. I wonder if he hit the chair. Might have hit the chair with the side of his head, the leg of the chair. Well, well, he's trainers, sitting up. The trainers are smiling, so. Yeah. I'm told he hit the leg of our cameraman. Well, that's not so hard. No. <laughs> well, he's, well, that's too bad because they just got him back in the game. Yeah, just a little momentary. <laughs> I'm, he gets up and he seems fine. And it sounded like he looked like, looked like he was answering all the questions correctly. Yeah. Well, you've got to make sure. That's the thing yeah. today with that concussion rule and everything. You know, you think about that, too, back when we were playing. I mean, the things you didn't know. Oh. You know, just about getting knocked silly. You know, all the phrases, knocked silly and seeing stars. Right. 
so there's much more protocol for athletes and take they're doing this right now on the bench. Really fall away doesn't go. See now one thing and this is not a criticism but see he pivoted away and had to and faded when he didn't have to fade. I thought maybe he'd come back with his left hand and go right over the front rim. And he gave himself the little Pooh Richardson head bombs. Usually those are celebratory. Well, he's a little frustrated at not being able to score. What is he, one for nine? Yes. Fenner still three. See, Fenner still hasn't gotten another look. Yeah, and, 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 here, and here's Dorsey. The, the thing that Dorsey does, he controls the ball, and you have got to make him pick it up. And right now, Prep is not doing that. And this lead has stretched out to 10, and it's about to be more. Well, to me, it feels even more. Yeah. Well, in this game, yeah, 10's a lot. Yes. And here comes the pressure from Free throw, good. That is Dorsey. First free throw of the game, seven points. You know, the other thing is, if you're not used to playing against a guy who's a left-hander, it's kind of like boxing against a left-hander, you know, you walk right into this punch once in a while. Same thing here, you know, your coaches go, he's left-handed, he's left-handed, he's left-handed, make him go right, make him go right, make him go right, and he goes right by it. Bill Maxey in for the first time, replacing Adams. Maxey was big time in the semis with Adams out of the game. Maxey had barely played any minutes this year, six-footer. Junior, you're going to see a lot of him down the road. And inside, strong finish for Fenner. That's what Prep needs to get something started. First time he's seen the ball and I don't know how long. So, you know, and that can, that can kind of be the case sometimes when you're looking to get the ball in a specific area. But, you know, he has the ability to get, look at that, one dribble and attack. I love it. A lot of people don't understand that, but when you, you, when you can go from the top of the key or 25 feet to the basket in one dribble and attack the basket to score and get the three-point play, that's a huge play. So what was a 12-point lead a moment ago? Down to nine. Two minutes left in the first half. Good look underneath by Davis and turning around, Niles scores. The Fenner came over and made a great job, but Niles stayed with it. That for Brewery, Brewery in traffic. Not to Clough. And now more blood. And Clough will have to go to the bench. Well, Mike Kelly just Mike's, giving Mike, it to the officials. Mike saying, I got more guys bleeding. I, could read, <laughs> I heard that. And we're not getting any calls. And uh, this is one of those moments where I mean, this is one of those moments you're standing up for your team right now. No, 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 no question. You're you trying know. to ignite something. Fenner just you made know, a strong play. Sometimes you <laughs> got to appeal to him. You know, I, I used to say, listen, I know we're foul. We foul, but they're not immune to it either. All I'm asking is if you're going to call that down here, you need to call the same thing at the other end. And, and you know, they are because look at the team fouls. It's 10 5. But, uh, you know, what Mike's arguing is you go underneath the basket, players are coming out bleeding. So there's arms, elbows out there. Right. Well, a lot of cases when that happens, it's the aggressive team that gets the calls because they're attacking the basket more. Through a catch and shoot. And gets called on the rebound. And he is frustrated right now. Mike Kelly he, trying to keep his head in the game. Yep, he, holds, he holds his hands up. First foul on Brewery. And Fenner with 13 of their 25. And they got to get they got to get somebody else who's got to help them with the scoring. But it's a long way around the track. You know that. We don't play two quarters. We play four. That's what you're talking about that. with Maxi. Yeah. You know they just keep bringing guys off the bench that can get to the basket. And then if they want to, they pitch it out to Davis, and he nails a three. And now the lead's 13. Brewey goes one-on-one -on -one deep, draws the foul, will get to the line. Beach wanted a hell ball, but well, I think didn't, Niles, they didn't have a controlled long yeah, enough. Niles was in good position, but then he came down over yeah. him, and that's what they called. 
Hiles has played Brewy well. Well, when you're bigger, you can you you can afford to play behind and make the make the offensive man shoot the ball over you. And that and then the thing is, the key is, cut him out and make sure he doesn't get to the board. So you get yeah. a look at the bandage there under the chin. Yeah, that's a that's a warrior right there. Yeah. Yeah, he sounded like two coaches. Crowd unusually quiet here. It really is. The prep, prep fans, of course, do a silent free throw thing, so the Rainier Beach fans are quietly whispering scoreboard. You know, I'd, I'd rather have people screaming at me than no, no sound at all. You know, so, you know the old term silence is definite. Yeah. Oh, it's always more fun to play in a gym where people are yelling at you. And See, I always figure it's more fun to play on the road because you went on the road, you know, and then you shut them up. Well, I always remember Jose Ortiz when he came from, you know, Puerto Rico to play for Oregon State. You know, and of course, Puerto Rico, semi, even semi-pro ball, you sure. know, they play with the chicken wire in the gym. Oh, yeah. And they throw things. And uh, the first time that he won a game at Mac Ford, and he came back out on the floor to do an interview, and I, I, we were interviewing him on TV, and I said, you sure want to be out there with all the Duck fans? And, of course, he's just smiling and waving. <laughs> duck football players are yelling at him. And he says, much worse than Puerto Rico. Yeah. But he said, that's great. He says, it makes you want to play hard. But he's there waving at the Duck fans. Interesting. I thought maybe they would go two for one because uh, you know they've got a lot of time left on the clock. Yeah, you're up 11. You've kind of done what you wanted to do. Too. Yeah. You don't want to stymie your uh, no. creativity. First miss, miss I believe, for, three yeah, for Davis. Four for five now for Davis. Well, we'll have to see what they can chip away. They got 20 seconds. And now another whack and an offensive foul. And. Uh, I think Brewy might have uh, retaliated a little against Dorsey because on the last free throw, Dorsey jumped in front of him in a two-shot situation after the first free throw, almost as if he was taunting him a little bit. Yeah. You notice that that, that Beach now has gone small. You know they don't have any size. And all on the bigs the, on the floor. out. And they're going to bring Rio back in. Of course, he hasn't played a lot of minutes, but he got the early fouls. No, places Maxi. I, I don't. I don't know if they gave Brewer that foul. If they gave it to twenty, and yeah. they didn't. They did. They gave so it to it twenty. Was, it was Hicks. Hicks. Now Brewer didn't look too unhappy about that. Final ten seconds. Strong rebound for Martin. See if they can get it down court. Michael Phillips lost it. Half court. No. And the first half comes to an end. Rainier Beach. Firing on all cylinders has an 11 point lead over their Metro League rivals. It is halftime of the WIA Dairy Farmers of Washington Les Schwab Tires 3A Boys Basketball Championships. Rainier Beach 38, Seattle Prep 27. This is the WIA Network. We were driving from Portland to California for a bike race when a tire went flat. We limped into Les Schwab, but it was closed for the night. Hoping for some good Les Schwab mojo, we began changing it ourselves. Just then, John appeared and reopened the store. He quickly assessed that all the tires were about to go and got us a new set so we could make the race. Super John deserves a medal for rescuing our road trip. I'm Kim Brown, and that's my Les Schwab story. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. Now welcome back to the Tacoma Dome, 38-27, Rainier Beach leading Seattle Prep at halftime of Washington's 3A Boys Basketball Championship. Got milk? Well, we do. <laughs> Shannon Rodifer is here, the Washington State Dairy Ambassador. That means you're the Dairy Ambassador for the whole state of Washington, yes. not just for Snohomish County, right? Correct. So how do you how do you get from that point? I know you come from the farm background, of course, up in Snohomish. But uh, what take us through the process a little bit of, uh, of making it to the top of the milk rankings? <laughs> okay, so I started out just I wanted to become a dairy ambassador because I wanted to share the st stories of um, my fellow dairy farmers and just portray help bridge the gap between the public and the farm and 
Um, I studied a lot of information about industries and I learned a lot through public interactions at the fair and I became a, um, one of Snohomish County's county ambassadors and then I ran for the state contest where I had to do school presentations, civic group presentations, and all kinds of things. So that's kind of was the difference was once you got out there and started actually talking to people, you were compared to the other county yeah. ambassadors, and you won. Yes, I did. So that now do you get to travel more of the state, and you maybe because I, I know you get to Eastern Washington. There's plenty. There's plenty of cows and milk, but they do things a little differently over there, don't they? Yes, yep. A different climate and different farming styles. So when you talk about dairy products, obviously, you know, we, 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 we like to talk about got milk, milk and cookies kind of thing, but really it's the awareness of all the dairy products and the health benefits. We talk about cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt. I mean, you're, you're, you're really spreading the word about everything. Yep. Um, my school presentation uh, teaches the kids about how milk gets from the farm to the table and a little bit about background information about how well farmers take care of their animals and the pride that they have in ensuring a pure product for consumers. Now, did you get to, were you a 4-H kid and you got to raise your own I cow? I was, yep. Oh, I, dairy still cow? I still have dairy cows. Yeah. That's, that's the good thing about dairy cows. You get to keep them longer, yeah. too. Cause you got, I, know, I know everybody gets attached to the animals in 4-H and fair time, so you get to, they, they become like pets, yeah. don't they? What part, of, what part of the farm life do you enjoy? Because you've said, we've talked about this before, you want to go back and work on the farm going forward. What's the best part of farm life? Um, I enjoy working at feeding calves. It's fun just seeing all the cute babies. <laughs> all babies are kind of fun. But um, I just enjoy working with the animals. And um, in the future, I want to influence agriculture on more of a broader base. So I hope to work for the USDA one day and influence agriculture where I can. And are you seeing up, I know, you know, there's a lot of the farm to table movement and uh, shortening the distance between the consumer and organic goods. Uh, do you see that here in the Seattle area, particularly Snohomish County? Uh, yeah, um, I did the Seattle school tours. I believe I visited four elementary schools in Seattle and I got to take a calf with me and that was a really great experience. The kids loved seeing like a calf in their school, like who would have thought? And um, you know, so some of the schools actually like gardened and stuff themselves and have gardens at the schools. And so um, people are really trying to get back to, you know, learning more about where their food comes from and what goes into getting it. And there. figuring out it, where, where, how fresh a food could you really get in your house. So. Well, that's great. Well, that's, good. that's a nice future to have because yeah. the, the business is changing and you're going to be able to move right into that even when your term's done here. Definitely. Well, great to see you as always. And I know you're going to get to hand out some trophies again at the end of the evening. So yeah. enjoy your weekend here yeah, at the Dome. Thank you so much. All right, we've got milk right here as we proceed with the halftime. Harsh will be back. We'll take a look at some first half highlights and the numbers. That is Shannon Rodifer, the Washington State Dairy Ambassador. And we're back with more at the Dome. You're watching the WIA Network. Hi, we're Chris and Anna Gronerveld, local dairy farmers from Monroe, Washington. The Dairy Farmers of Washington, along with Les Schwab Tires, are proud co-title sponsors of the WIAA High School State Championships. The Washington Interscholastic Activities Association supports high school programs and activities that keep our kids growing in mind and body. Today's high school students will be some of tomorrow's community leaders, and we feel it is important to do our part in helping foster an appreciation of community, responsibility, teamwork, and sportsmanship in today's youth. The WIAA helps provide those opportunities through athletic, artistic, and academic competition. Please join the Dairy Farmers of Washington and Les Schwab Tires in supporting young people in your community by attending your local high school state championships. For a complete list of events and activities in your area, visit WIAA.com. We continue at halftime from the Tacoma Dome, Rainier Beach leading Seattle Prep 38-27 in the WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Les Schwab Tires 3A Boys Basketball Championships. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. Of course, Rainier Beach pushing the buttons early and really got everybody involved, and that's part of how they built this lead. Look at that ankle breaker, Dorsey, who we talked about at the top of the show. And then the pressure on defense, so good. And it came from so many places. You saw Ladd getting things started. And the finish for Marquise Davis. Mitch Brewey frustrated through most of the first half. One of nine. 
But picking up the slack has been Fenner. DJ's four of eight. Perfect at the free throw line, 13 points, three rebounds. He does have two personal fouls. Let's take a look at all the team numbers from the first half. Beach is shooting 52% from the field. Seattle prep 35%. You see the three-point numbers. And, of course, it was Davis hitting his first four threes for now four out of five. So he's hit all the three-pointers for Rainier Beach. Rebounding is in favor of Rainier Beach. Free throws. You see how many times prep spent at the free throw line. And I know Coach Harshman always likes that aggression factor, prep getting many more free throw attempts. Well, I, I, I like <laughs> that but I also like the fact that uh, you know uh, Beach has attacked the basket and they've gotten they've really shared the ball really really well I think sometimes when you're a team that's an up-tempo team like they are you get a bad knock of saying they just run and gun These, this team doesn't run and gun they run with a purpose and they know what they're they're trying to do when they get the ball to the other end do they get some easy baskets yeah but they get easy baskets because their defense forces turnovers and then they can capitalize on the other end now well, those orange and blue colors looking to celebrate, but there's still 16 minutes of basketball left. Second half when we come back, Rainier Beach in control in round four with Seattle Prep. You're watching the WIAA Network. My family and I were enjoying a big vacation in Tahoe. After a great day on the mountain, our car wouldn't start. I got a jump, but it kept dying. Everyone in town said, Go to Les Schwab. When I pulled up, George delivered. He quickly tested the battery and confirmed it was a goner. While he installed a new one, I finally got my first relaxation of the vacation. It's nice to be treated like a neighbor so far from home. I'm Clay Gilman, and that's my Les Schwab store. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. Ready to start the second half, 38-27. Rainier Beach and Seattle Prep. We are going to start the second half shooting free throws because Mike Kelly, the Seattle Prep coach, was given a technical leaving the floor at halftime. This is not the technical. This is the warm-up for the technical. Marquise Davis will take it. And Mike Kelly, you know, again, we talked about this before. You're fighting for your team. Yeah, and I don't think he said anything other than the fact that, hey, my, I got three. I know I read his lips before. I got three guys that, that have been bloody, and we can't get a call, basically, is what he's saying. So I, I think, you know, I used to ask my father. I says, you know, I said, you're pretty good at, at, at getting on the officials, but not in a positive way. He says, well, sometimes I just say, you know, it used to be three seconds, and that guy stood in that key for that long, and we'd get the ball. He said, I tried to get him to think about what they were doing, and maybe we'd get a few calls. Well, and with the blood, Jackson Clough now comes out in a different jersey, wearing number 30. Now, we've already had Brewery have to make a change from 22 to 21. I know Davis has shot the ball extremely well, but I'll tell you right now, I love the half that Will Dorsey had. They gave him three turnovers, but and, and only one assist, and I don't get that because he's made great penetration, and he kicked to him twice for those three, two of the threes. I remember that. Well, we talked about this yesterday. You thought this was going to be a game for the guards, and certainly, uh, you know, Dorsey and Davis have uh, set the tone. Well, you can have the best postman in the state, but if the guards can't get the ball down the floor against pressure and get it to him where he can do something with it, it doesn't matter. So we're going to start with the T. And here's Marquise Davis. It's always tough opening a half with uh, it's a hard time to shoot free throws just walking out cold. Well, yeah, it is. And that, but, but he was there working on it. Are you allowed to do that? Now he's went out and took well, a couple. Well, yeah. I guess you're warming up. Yeah, you're you can do whatever up. you want. Until the, until the horn blows, yeah, you hey, can do whatever you want. Who was it who said never take a shot in warm-ups that you won't take in the game? You're about to take a free throw. Exactly. And was I was Guzzi? That's Guzzi, right? I think it was. Yeah. And I, was, I, I had a superstition that I always made the last shot before he went to the bench. I just felt that that, that was yeah. good luck. So, so it was a lay-in. <laughs> you could have been out there all you know, <laughs> That's right. an hour or something. <laughs> We're oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. had a coach who made us do that that you couldn't finish a drill without oh, yeah. making it. And then we would do it over and over until we made it. 
And it, there was a drill that I learned when I was in China that I loved. And if you didn't make 50 lay-ins in a row with the right hand and 50 with the left, you had to start over again. Uh -oh. Boy, some days that was a long day. Beach is up 13. And they get the ball back where he pulls down the rebound. Now a little short on that three. Interesting. Whistle inside. They're they're uh, they're not taking any prisoners. Those two. But I'd say what Bruy, Bruy's body language. He is. He's a gonna. He's either gonna tear it up in the second half or die trying. I mean, you can tell he's determined. Well, right then they they, they ran a play on an out of bounds play, and he turned and he didn't sit down and, and want the ball like he like he, he's got to do if you want the thing. So now he's going to set the pick. They're going to run a little baseline screen there. Foster, Fenner. Foster did a good job on him in the first half. There's Fenner missing. Well, the only thing there is here, here's prep. You know, you got nobody on the offensive boards, but Mitch and he's on the other side. He really grabs that ball. And a block in the forecourt. So prep starting to kind of give it back a little bit physically. And that's Adam's what third foul. So it's just like in the semis, Rio picked up his fourth foul this early in the third quarter. He'll stay in though with three. He's certainly fresh. He sat quite a bit in the first half. Three pointer. That's good for Fenner. He shot the ball well away. Better than better than I had seen him do it earlier in the tournament. Corner, Rainier Beach three, doesn't fall for Dorsey. Martin knocked to the floor. Rainier Beach foul number three, Devon Piper. Third and Piper picks up his third. Yeah, so they've got three with three. That's their third team foul. And maybe the technical had a little something to do with the guys with strike troops thinking about, hey, you know, maybe we need to. Reassess. Now the defensive strike force off the bench about to check in. Keywon Miller. And there's a grab being called against Davis. You know there was a. It, it wasn't. It, there was kind of an unwritten rule of officiating back in the 50s. And what and the saying was this: Call what you see, but see what you call. And it was pretty basic because a lot of times, and I'm not trying to get on the officials, but a lot of times. Things are called on what you think you see, but not really what you what you do see. Rui up nice. No, followed. No, knocked off the rim. Martin almost had that. Now to the other end. Off the glass, and Adams gets one. Speed kills. Did he push that thing? That's what you got to do. Push the ball, attack the defense, attack the basket, draw the defense, dish for an easy one. Benner again. Misses again. Benner now, 5 out of 12. And I'll tell you what, Foster has really done a good job of cutting Mitch Brewery off the boards. And Mitch hasn't got to the offensive glass at all this half. Rebound Brewery. And Brewery's getting on the boards early in the second half. Got eight now. This is a guy that'd love to fire up Martin. Ball's loose. Still a prep ball. I don't think Martin's uh, the guy that you want putting the ball on the floor and trying to make the pass. And an early timeout taken by Mike Bathia. The Seattle Prep starting to gather a little momentum, although Raider Beach is still keeping them down by 12 points, and that's that's an important way to play, maintaining some space. Yeah, no, no question. You know, that was a good timeout. And, you know, Mike is one of those vociferous coaches, too. He gets his point across to his guys, you know, and I want to say this again. They have a lot of discipline in that program and it starts with Mike Bethea and uh, you know just because they can run and dunk and do those kind of things doesn't mean they don't have discipline. They just play at a much higher pace than a lot of people. So.
Now the dribble for Seattle Prep. That's Michael Phillips. Gives up to Clough. Clough to Brewery. Remember these guys switched jerseys, both of them, in the first half. Tough shot. Good offensive get rebound. Done. And there is Martin. Now, if they can get doing that, they got a shot. Yeah, they need the third guy tonight. And Martin's got to be the man. So let's see what he can do in the second half. He's only taken three shots in the game, missed three free throws. And you've got Club. Fenner checking Adams, and Adams has scored at least two in the first half. I don't know if he scored since. But. He, just the, he has the one basket here in the second half. X in, Clough will check out. Deep penetration from the baseline. Guess who? Davis. Now 7 of 14, 20 points. Oh, and a foul, and Mike Bathia not happy about that. They're going to get Dorsey out of there. Dorsey walks right to the bench. And Mike Bathia is going to give him the talk. And I, I don't think he's telling me he looks good in his uniform. <laughs> Ladd comes back. I'll tell you what, Ladd was good in that pressure in the first half. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a gnat. You know, he's, he's, he's an irritant. If you're trying to bring the ball up the floor. Well, all their guards are, really. I'll tell you what, he looks like Honey, I Shrunk Nate Robinson. <laughs> yeah, I think Nate was bigger than that at yeah. birth. <laughs> but, you know, he stays in front of the ball, I mean. Well, he, he does, you know. He's, he has a good knack at watching him in the tournament. He, he has a pretty good understanding mm -hmm. for the game for a young yeah. kid. Oh, Dials comes back in, another brewy irritant. Well, they just keep bringing them at you. That's, a, that's the thing they've got going for them. Martin strong inside, but can't connect. A lot of contact. I, I, I don't think that prep, you know, I know they wanted a, a call there, but you got to finish. In the backcourt. That'll be it over and back. All goes back to prep. Now they're not making a dent. Still down 12, and now we're past the midway point of the third quarter. But, you know, I don't know about you, but I have a feeling that they're actually playing better. They're playing better. Well, but maybe they're, they're, they're not getting, getting better but, shots. But they're not getting anything done. You know, do you, does that make sense? That, that's my, yeah. my take. They've got Martin in a good position. They're giving Brewery a rest right now. And Fenner. Fenner attacks and scores. So Fenner and Martin, you still you know, have two guys on the floor who can score. If, if Adams is going to Kansas and he plays defense like that, he'd be sitting next to Bill Self a lot. No. Okay. Yeah, that play happened so fast with him. <laughs> yep. Fooled even us. Fenner in and out, heartbreak there. And Beach, another rebound. Rebound's pretty even now, 23 and 22, and at their end, fast break points heavily in favor of Beach. Well, that was pretty Adams. good, a nice crossover by Adams about the free throw line and blow into the basket. Well, Adams is the only Viking to score a basket in the second half so far. And Lawrence Hicks. Has it go right through his hands out of bounds. That, that's one of those things that, hey, you know, we can't afford. It's gone to 12 now. We can't afford to not get a good look. So Ryan Kandak in the game. Clough comes back in. Corner launching. No good, but close. Snapping up the rebound, Dorsey. 
Davis has not hit one this half. And a timeout called by Rainier Beach. And I think Mike Bethea is not thrilled with his offense well, right now. Well, I think, here's, here's what I think. It's not that Davis here again. It's not that that was a bad shot. It was a bad shot at the time because he rushed the shot. And I, I get the feeling that if, if he doesn't get the ball very often, it was kind of like, hey, I haven't had a lot of shots. So it's my turn. So I, when I get it, I'm shooting it. And, and, the, and the guy and the defender kind of had his hand in yeah. his face. And so he didn't get a good, real good look at it. All right, we talked about Seattle prep greatness. You know, you talk about Rainier Beach, the Jamal Crawford team. Anything close to that? We need, well, Fran we need Francis Williams here to have that discussion. But. Well, yeah, you know, the other thing is, is it Jamal really controlled things. You know, he, he was he was the top focal point, although uh, David King that's on the bench over there now, I mean, he he was hard to guard because yeah. he was such a big target inside. I, I, what I'm getting at is this may be the most, and we may not know for a couple of years, this may be the best collection of talent yeah, that no. Beach has had. Yes. Because Jamal, I can think you could take it high school, Jamal and four guys, and he could win a lot of games. Right. Because he'd figure out, he was like Michael Jordan, he'd put people in the right place, you get the ball, you don't get the ball. Yeah. Well, and, you know, and, then, and then ultimately, I'll take care of it. Yeah. The Stewart twins and Nate, that was pretty good yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a really good discussion. We may have to wait till next year if this bunch is back to yeah, get serious about that. You know, we, we know it because we've been there, but a lot of people don't know how good those teams were. Yeah. And they forget. That. Everything but the stuffer. But they are moving the ball so well right now. Look at the ball not touching the floor. You know, the, the thing that uh, the thing that I like, even though he missed the dunk, is he went with force to the basket. You know, a lot of people aren't impressed with the dunk because they say it's, hey, it gets two points just like laying it in. But that situation right there, he went with authority. So you can live with to. the he fact that he missed it. it. Yeah. No. He got and fouled, now, still gets to the line. Yep. And this is another one of your young guys. Two free one Niles. Now you take Niles. Look at the two sophomores. 6'9 and 6'7, Niles and Foster. Would you ever play them together? Why not? The Twin Towers? It's called the High Low. <laughs> you know. If you want to play. And we've seen Foster, I mean, so solid underneath. If you want to play, uh, you know, power basketball and just, you know, shove it down their throat, and they can still run, that's the thing. Yeah. So, and they're still learning. They're still learning how to play in the post. But they've done a good job on Brewery today of get, uh, bodying up on See, him. Yeah, I think they've equally work. played well. I think oh, that's no, a big no story question. in this game. There, they're both in now, so. <laughs> get over and back violation. Well, I, Prep. I, I didn't quite see how that ball got knocked out. I thought I thought Pre or, uh, I thought Dorsey hit it. Poke Because the yeah. ball was going that way. To me, that's a common sense thing in the direction of the ball. If it had gone, been knocked sideways or something, then maybe you could say it was was prep. And that's back in. That's when you need to come over and look at the look at the uh, you know replay. But you can't do that in high school. I know that. We trust officials. There's three of them out there. Good. No comment. Hey, if there were four, somebody would still find something. <laughs> oh. Banner gets to the line. See, now he gets to the line, but you know what? And look at they're talking about Beach. Is that he was open at, at the top of the key or just inside it for a, for a shot. And that's when you got to go up to come and raise up and shoot that ball. And then, you know, if they come at you, then go by them. Three fouls on Davis. And Fenner goes to the free throw line. Fenner's played very well. Both ends of the floor. 4-4 four, four at the line. 18 points. And now Brewey comes out of the game. I don't think Prep realizes. But Davis is back there by himself. Oh, they finally do. <laughs> Somebody finally counted one, two, three, four. Where's that fifth guy? Davis was hiding well, he down was by hiding the bench. By the bench, he was blending in with the orange yeah. uniform. There he is. Gets the ball. Bango. <laughs> but see, that's a different shot than he that he's missed. He missed the first three, but this time he was open. Knocked it down. That's the shot he was making in the first half. <laughs> well, that's a 14-point game. 
Davis now five of eight from beyond the arc. He's got 23. Final seconds of a third quarter. Now Kelly calling out a play. Brewery out of the game for the end of the quarter. Whistle, no. Well, that would have counted. And they get Dorsey. No, that was not Dorsey. That was, was Adams. Adams, and that's four. Did you see him turn and look at the officials? That was a... He thought that was an interesting call. Out of the game. Here at the end of the quarter, because with a 14-point lead, there's a little security blanket for Beach right now. Right. Marchesini will shoot free throws. First of the game. That's a 13-point game. Prep has made more trips to the free throw line. They're 12 of 16 now. Beach is 7 of 9. Final seconds of the third quarter. Davis all the way. Rejected by Fenner. That's, that's DJ Fenner saying, we're not done yet. Exactly. Eight minutes to go. He goes straight to the bench. Eight minutes left. In the 3A state championship game. Rainier Beach 50, Seattle Prep 38. You are watching the WIAA Network. My friends and I were driving to the Salt Lake Airport to fly to a music teacher's conference when our tires started going flat. We called the Les Schwab in Ogden, Utah, and they said, Come on in. They were so fast, we didn't even eat the free popcorn. There you go. And we even made our flight. In a world where such great customer service is not always the case, it's nice to know there's Les Schwab. I'm Bonnie Lamborn, and that's my Les Schwab story. Les Schwab, doing the right thing since 1952. Fourth quarter begins from the Tacoma Dome. Bob Akami and Dave Harshman. Seattle Prep trying to find a spark. In the third quarter in particular, Coach Mike Kelly kept shifting around his big three when you talk about Mitch Brewey, DJ Fenner, and the youngster Martin. And really hasn't found it yet. Fenner leading, Fenner leading score in the game with 20 points, 6 of 15. Perfect of the line. Brewey, 1 of 10, but 9 rebounds. Has 7 points. And Martin's only taken four shots. Yeah, my, my take a couple things. The guards really haven't given him a lot on the perimeter, so, so Fenner's had to take over. And I think Mitch is really tired because, you know, he's banging against all their bodies, and they're bringing, keep bringing new fresh bodies at him. And, and here comes the trap, and, and he doesn't, he's not really demanding the ball in the post like he normally would. Fenner trying to keep in it. That's a heck of an athletic play right there. And I think third day of the tournament, you know, some players are a little more tired than others. Well, no question. You know, and, I, and, and, Brewery, and Brewery's been beaten up by the two bigs for beats. Oh, no question. And you, when you play on a, on, a, on a regulation college court, which is 10 feet longer than a regulation high school court, the third day in a row yeah. can be tough on you. And Beach just keeps hitting these shots. Well, and that one, that one was with a hand in his face. That was, that was sweet. Davis has 25, and that's a two. Nine of 18. Yeah, if you just compare the guards, it's been all beach. Now Perry posting the pie. Changes the fluff, and they get three there. So Brewey has only two baskets in the game. They're both threes. He's two of three from beyond the arc. O of eight from two-point range. Well, clearly he's not shooting enough threes. Yeah. Oh, no. They just missed that one. Big ten Fenner. rebound right there. Well, I think Fenner's trying to be the spark right now. Both ends of the floor. Nice, nice ball underneath. But Martin can't make it fall. Follow-up good for Brewey. And it all started with a great look by Michael Phillips. Great look. Got it down to seven, you know. 
And Brewey scored five in a row. Not much, but I mean, talk about Spark. Get him going. Davis this time will penetrate. Has that block by Brewey. But it was saved in bounds. By right Niles. now, I get the feeling that Davis is going to try to take this target, try to take over the game. And so that last one was a bad shot selection. Dorsey got hip checked by Clough. It's only the fourth team foul. Let's go down to the other end and relive what happened a moment ago. Look at the pass, the pass. Right behind the defense. Martin and there's Brewery. The great right. position. How about Michael Phillips? Yeah. Well, that's what guards are supposed to do. Find the open man. Well, now the prep students all up and paying attention. You know, I, I could do like tell you the story about when uh, it, we're scrimmaging when I think the Sonic the second sickness to an outlet pass to the other team. I said nice pass Jack. He said well he was open wasn't he? <laughs> Tanner almost had that steal. Beach has it back. Five and a half to go. The lead is seven. Now Beach needs to take a little more care with their possessions. A little longer with Piper in the game. And on the curl, Adams. Gives it up in tight quarters. Nobody's left the key. Adams again, hangs in the air, no. Martin gets wanged hard on the rebound. And you know what? The big three are starting to pull it together for prep. Brewie's just kind of the, the cheerleader right now. Martin playing hard underneath. And of course, Fenner doing everything. It's kind of like, you know, you take the you take the timeout or the end of the corner goes, all right, we're down 12. We got him right where we want him. <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes we, get, we forget these are kids, you know, and they're going to make mistakes, you know, and uh, Stranger things have happened. Martin thought, misses. I almost thought it was an air ball. First of the hand. one on one. And that hurts because you need to make your free throws. No, you've got to make your free throws. Oh, no question. Bill Shonley here. Yeah. But a great job right there. But see, here's Dorsey now all of a sudden trying to penetrate where there's no penetration. He gets caught up, lucky gets a timeout. Yeah, Rainer Beach on offense now, it's starting to just turn into the Dorsey Davis show. Yeah, kind of one Forgetting there's three other guys one, yeah. there. So prep in the quarter has come back seven to two and cut the margin to seven with a lot of time left, five minutes. Yeah, this is going to go down to the wire, I, I believe. You know. and, and the other decision you have to make as a coach, and you, you want your players to be smart, at some point, prep has to put Martin and Brewey and Fenner in the game and just leave him there. No question. No question. I don't think it's a bad situation where if you started Fenner like on the baseline and put a, put Martin and Brewery on the block and then you flash Fenner to the high post right here. You flash him to the high post. Now you got these two guys and the guards come out here. So the guards are below him, and now he could go one on one. You got two rebounders right there, but even if he passed the ball to the wing, he can also go opposite. And you can, this is what I call a power step. So every time the ball comes here, it swung, and then you, you just screen opposite, and you're going to get the worst shot you should get is a free throw line uh, jump shot, unless the guards sag off and you kick it to them. They got to be ready to shoot the three. So it's just a, you know, it's just a way to really pound the ball inside. Over the hoop, whistle, foul. Fenner has committed three. And going to the free throw line for Rainier Beach is Andrew Adams. The Fenner got the hands of a knee. They're all got the hands of a shorts. We talked about leaving the big three in. They all got the hands pulling the shorts right now. They're all tired. You know, the, hard thing, the hard thing about doing uh, high school sports like this, I wish I had to buy that those kids. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Look at him. Three guys for the board. I love the way Martin rebounds the ball with two hands. Get it up quickly to Fenner, but Fenner waits. And plenty of time. Clough back in the game. He's handling the ball. Remember, Clough changed numbers at halftime because of blood. Brewery's also wearing a different jersey. Phillips. Brewery off balance. No. Beach has the rebound. I don't know how Adams got in there to get the ball. It's like he slid in from the top. Yeah. It's Brewery, on a water slide. Brewery need to really uh, get his base and go up strong, and he didn't. He was off balance. The lead is 10 because you cannot stop Marquise Davis. You 25. That was a great move. That was a great move. He scored the only two baskets of the fourth quarter for Rainier Beach. That's Brewery's second foul on a 1-5. One, one oh, they called it on No, Beach. it's on Beach. Oh, interesting. I, I thought they were going to call it on uh, Mitch over the back. You know, the last time down, it was not a bad move for Derek Fern to wait for teammates to pass it, set it up. But he also had Adams checking him one-on-one. -on -one. And if you go to the basket, Adams either going to foul him or got to let him go because he's got four fouls. And obviously, Mike Bathia's made the choice to leave Adams in right now. Well, you go with him as long as you can. Yeah. And, you know, I agree with that. you got to leave your best players in at the yeah. end of games. They're not going to help you on the bench, whether they're fouled out That's or you're right. sitting him. So you might as well have tough, them playing. score from the bench. I think it happened once in a CBA game. <laughs> Probably did. <laughs> That keeps his footing. Rio throws it back out to the top. 15 on the shot clock, 340 in the game. Davis, oh, and he draws that. He was just too quick there well, but for Clough the, to get in a position. But see, the thing, the reason he gets the call is he's attacking the defender and uh, going towards the basket. He's not going side to side. For young people that are watching this, you got to play to the basket. You cannot play side to side. Because last time I looked, there weren't baskets on the side of the court. They were on the end. That's true. The team fouls now. Rainer Beach has given away the double bonus. Prep has only committed six. So we're still not shooting yet. There it is. But, I mean, part of that is just Davis's quickness. Oh, no You question. couldn't get in a position defensively anyway. Now, away from the ball. Lads called, and it's a We're running call down. I, wa I watched the whole thing, and, and he pushed, took two hands and pushed him right in the chest. Lad picks up his first. Trip ball down nine. Here comes the pressure. Quickly to midcourt, numbers for Prep. Clough gives it up. Fenner, that's a three. Oh, Martin strong on the board, but he didn't get it. What? He came down on, on Mitch and lost to control of the ball. He really had the rebound. And that was a good look. That was the right play. Fenner took the shot. He was open, you know, didn't go in. And now Ladd shoots the one and one Brewery just picked up his fourth. Beach now in the bonus. 3.20 to go. One good. When you make your free throws, you make your coach look good. Are you listening, Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> I think Shaq was always interested in making his coach look good. No, he wasn't. He wasn't interested at all. <laughs> I, think, I think Terry Porter would agree with that. <laughs> I know Terry Porter would agree with that. <laughs> nice move. Backdoor cut. Mitch fills at the high post. Wide open. I'm wondering how he's feeling since he got knocked down and everything because he wow. just doesn't seem to have a lot of spark. And I don't mean that to deride him because he really gives 
everything to the like game. Like he really he, got yeah, hurt. I, th I think he really I mean, got I think when out. he, you know, we saw that when he got run over early in the game. And yeah. it wasn't a dirty play. It was more momentum. But I think he may have landed right on I, his well, chin. I, I, I'm and that kind of jars the head. Yeah, exactly. So I've he, seen that before in he basketball. He could have a terrible headache yeah. going on. And well, the jaw, you feel it yeah. there. Plus, he cut himself. So, yeah, I mean, it's true. Since then, he's, he, you know, he's played frustrated. Now he's... Cutting it out at the end See of the game. See that little action right there? Martin, when he passed the ball, then he went down and screened for Brewery, and Brewery popped up, and it was real simple. You know, he caught the ball, and it's not a bad place for him to have it because if he shoots and misses, you got Martin got a chance to get the offensive rebound for you. You know, there's so many people here from prep. We've been trying to find uh, Eric and Kelly Brewery, Mitch's parents. I saw, I saw Eric earlier. He said, well, They're here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's sitting in the end down here. Oh, okay. Somewhere. But, um, you know, I think the story's been written, and you know, I had you—you you got to see Eric play, and I went right. to school with Eric and Kelly, and covered them a lot at UPS, and both were tremendous. Kelly, you know, at that time, women's basketball was not nearly getting as close. Kelly was a very good yeah. guard. Just, uh, I, had, I told Eric this when I saw him earlier in the year. I said, well, he got your size and ability, and he got her feistiness. He said, that's right. <laughs> that's just right. <laughs> well, he was a very smooth, silky player. Yeah. I know they've enjoyed watching his career, and of course, a lot of people asking. You know, it's the first time Mitch has ever played at a chance to win a championship. They never got. Of course, they didn't play in the dome. The dome wasn't built when they were in school. Right. But they didn't win championships. Eric's one of those best guys to never win a championship. Fenner. Well, look at that. Play on. How did, he, how, how did Dorsey not come up with that ball? Dorsey about right got inside his shirt. Here's the pressure with two minutes to go. Fenner wills that in. Great. I'm, I'm telling you, Davis was all over him like a cheap suit. Fenner, 24 and 5. It's a six point game. And here comes your trophy dash. Two minutes to go. Offensive foul. And that's it for Rio. I, now, I will say this. He took off on one foot. And when I'm teaching young kids, I say in the half court, you can never take off on one foot because your momentum carries you yeah. to the defense. You must come to a jump stop and be on balance. And that's a two-footed stop. Rep has it back. Adams done for the night. Fanner got it. Follow me, boys. I'll take you there. I love it. This is what high school championship game is supposed to all be about. Didn't we see this happen just the last game? You can be tired tomorrow. That's exactly <laughs> right. Lad. And Beach needs to get back to what they were doing. Now, Ladd tries to do it all by himself, and he does! That, I'll tell you what, that was a huge play. Big move for the little man. Six-point game, coming out of the one-minute mark. Pluff. It's the fade. And he was kind of off balance, and Prep calls a timeout. So back to the four-point game, 58 seconds left. Prep has grabbed some momentum. Fenner now 26 points, 9 of 19 for the field. Davis, 27 points. Here it is one more time. This is a heck of a move. Gutsy one to, and I'm not saying it's a bad move, but holy cow for the young kid. You know, the one thing is, I love athletes with confidence. You know, they, they may not always make the right play, but they always have the confidence that they can get the job done. And speaking of Eric Brewey, that's Kelly sitting in front of him. 
Dad looks uh, pretty serious about this right now. You know, you know who Eric looks like. Harsh is checking on the timeouts right now. You know who Eric looks like, kind of scowling up there? His old looks like Don Zach. Yeah, Don oh, yeah. Zach, never quite sure at the end of the game. Kind of had that, mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> hey, but I never knew if Don was happy if he That's even if true. he won. Don was like, that when we'd win a league or something. <laughs> uh. Here's the pressure by Seattle Prep with 56 seconds. Don't have to go out of your way to foul yet. No, you do not have to. I, you know, one thing I think you need to do is you you got to be able to. Good lad. Well, Fenner doing a great job of, of pressuring the ball at his size versus the little guy. That tries to put it. Another block for Bruy. Prep in 36 seconds. Just needed two. Fenner will take it off balance. No. Tip out. Rebound. Phillips. Take it away. Break away. And the finish for Davis. That might be it with 20 seconds left. Clef now double teamed and the foul. Boy, Fenner really got knocked to the floor. There was a lot of contact. And I know, you know, I know you're gonna miss some calls. I, I know that. But as a coach, you always say, look it, you gotta call, you gotta protect the people with the ball, you gotta call those ones in the open court. You know. There was obviously some contact, but the official didn't feel there was enough to warrant a foul that time, and that's their call. So Clough can get two back with the clock stopped. Beat starting to celebrate maybe just a few seconds early. Mike Bathia and his brain trust on the bench. I think going through a couple scenarios. Missed them both. Brewey throws it right back up and in. Holy cow. And they call the timeout. And he wanted a foul, too. <laughs> Holy. I don't know how he even got the ball up in the air. That, he was that just momentum's going the other way. Exactly. So, so four-point right, game, 13 right now, seconds. Right now, it's not bad to have Mitch out of the game to go with smaller, quicker guys right now. Maybe put Martin all the way back to protect. But I would switch everything in the backcourt, you know, because it doesn't really matter. Size, you know, you want to have some quickness. All right, let's talk free throws now for Beach. They're 9 of 13. Your best free throw shooters in the game. I mean, everyone, no one's missed more than one tonight. Davis, Dorsey, both two for two. But you don't have time to. What you do is you, what you tell your team, we're going to play underneath them. Allow them to go to the ball, up to the court. We want to try for the steal. If we don't get it, we want to foul immediately. I don't care who it is because you can't put time back on the clock. You cannot let the ball come in and time go off. Everyone in the backcourt right now. Beach will bring it in. They have one big in the game in Foster. And there's the foul. Fenner commits. Yeah, Wait, that's Fenner. That's, that's, that's five. Point four oh, seconds. no, that's not. That's four for him. But you can't, you can't help. It doesn't matter who it is. You, know, you can't think about that. you got to foul. But you can't foul out. You can't fly yourself out of the game. Well, but the thing is, so then maybe defensively, if you've got guys. But, see, he's one of your best defensive players. But in his situation, is that he probably should not let the guy go to the ball. Just try to deny the inbounds, you know. So free throws for Marquise Davis, who's had the night, 29 points, two of two at the line. It's a one on one. It's only the eighth team foul on prep. That's a big one. Well, you come in, he come in here, and you have the biggest game of your life in the state championship. Second one, no good. Yep, last chance. Brewy, but that's it. Beach is back, and the youngsters have won a state championship.
Rainier Beach has won another state championship, their first since 2008. And they do it in style, beating their arch rivals from the Metro League. Third time in four meetings this year. The final 61 to 58. And now the Vikings, Coach Mike Mathias saluting their fans as they come behind us to this side of the gym. Everyone on their feet. And a lot of love for a program with tons of history. But for these young guys, this is a chance to make their own history. And I don't want to be guilty of hyperbole, but boy, you start thinking repeat, repeat, a group like this? Well, it's, sure. It can be done. Mike Colbreeze is on the floor. Representatives of Les Schwab Tires, our dairy ambassador. And we're going to hand out some trophies. Well, everybody wants to celebrate, and rightly so. Go, we However, we have one more game to play in this building tonight, so. All right, don't forget to click over to our other thumbnail on the WIA network. Coming up, we'll have the 3A girls final and a very interesting game coming up between Prairie and Franklin, two completely different styles. Marquise Davis, no shocker there, is the most valuable player of the tournament, and I don't think he could have been more valuable tonight, setting the tone early. 30 points, five three-pointers. That's, that's the kind of, of game you only dream about having. You know, how many people actually do that? How many and you, people and you, do it in your, and you do it in your junior year. Yeah, and how many people... Well, like the game before, the young lady hits it. She's, she's 0 for 10, hits the game winner, you know, as a sophomore. Unbelievable. Here's the second place trophy being presented to the Seattle Prep Panthers. 24 and 6 on the year, and they say goodbye to one of their best ever, Mitch Brewey, but a lot coming back. Fenner has another year, and, of course, the sophomore, Martin, and... You know, with Mike Kelly, a guy who just knows a little bit about what he's doing with a whistle. <laughs> I think they're going to be okay. The all-tournament team has been announced. Mitch Brewery, of course, made it from prep as well as DJ Fenner, and deservedly so. And from Rainier Beach, they're about to give out the big trophy. Will Dorsey, Amario Adams, and Marquise Davis. All-tournament Marquise Davis. The most valuable player. We'll hear from him in just a couple of minutes, but it, right now I think we let him celebrate a little. Sure, and, and and let's not forget the big guys and the job they did inside. You know they've had their little bits and pieces this year. We saw Elijah Foster grow into that starting role, but Fuquan Niles. I mean, between the two of them, they were the difference makers against Bruy throughout the game. No question. And here comes the perpetual trophy. Mike Bathia knows what to do with that. Rainier Beach, the state champion. My fear is that somebody will drop the dang thing, you know, and they put it up above their head. But then it'll have a cool dent in it for, you know, <laughs> perpetuity. <laughs> That's a satisfied man. Again, you know, we talked in January. He says, I'm not sure. Not sure where we are. They, you know, Rio Adams hadn't quite blended in yet. They didn't quite know how he fit with these guys. And he showed a lot here, being in foul trouble in this tournament, not sulking on the bench, being a cheerleader, especially in the semis, but being a team guy. And and yet when he's out of the game, what did they all say last night? We had a rally for our leader. Yeah. He got that, he got that respect back. Well, and, and, and if he does end up going to Kansas, and I'm not saying he's not going to, I mean, he's got the athletic ability, and he'll go in there, and he'll be he'll be coached by Bill Self, so when he gets out of there, he really will be a very good basketball player. And again, he is the only senior, along with Joey Fuller, who saw just minimal action off the bench. The rest of this group is coming back. Should we tell Mike to book the hotel room across the parking lot for next month? Sure. Does that just get you in trouble? Well, you can tentatively do it. And here comes our guest in just a moment. 
We're going to get the visit with Marquise Davis, who's been congratulated by everybody else in the building. Marquise Davis joining us right now. Just 30 points in the state championship. I mean, it was going to take somebody, but did you think you'd do that much of it by yourself? My coach just told me to come out and give it all I got, and that's what I did. And you play these guys for the fourth time. Last time they kind of figured you out, but from the beginning, you, you were pushing all the right buttons. Oh, yeah. I mean, our coach told us to come out. He told us just to put that game behind us and just come out and work hard. And we just took it and ran with it, and we ended up winning again. And you, know, you, were, you were seeing each other well, but, I mean, you would start knocking down those threes early. It didn't even look like you were trying. Oh, yeah. Stroke, stroke. My coach just said keep shooting no matter what. I mean, last game, they were going in and out. My coach told me to keep shooting. They was falling for me today, and it was just good. And, you know, two guys who got to get a lot of credit are your bigs, uh, Fuquan and, uh, and uh, Elijah, who really put a licking on Brewey early and didn't let him get in any groove. And for a couple of young guys, that's pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. I love you guys to death. I mean, we knew Mitch was coming in. We knew Mitch was one of the best centers in the state, so we knew we had to play up and hard. Uh, our coach told us that uh, our bigs did not fall for all these uh, pump up and unders, and they just went out there and executed. And man, it feels so good. My heart's still pumping real fast. <laughs> I'm trying to talk to you guys, but you know, it's, it's, oh man, I can't believe we just won. So, Marquise, being an old old coach, the one thing I really like about the way you play, you're under control, but when you catch the ball, you're always ready to shoot it. And that is a big key. And you shoot the ball with great confidence, and it might not always go in, but because you do that with the, with the technique and the confidence, the ball does go in for you more often than not. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Hey, you can go the rest of your life and never feel this good. I'm telling you right uh, now. But this it, is the best know, feeling need, I've ever felt. You need feel. to enjoy this. Yeah. You really the do. Best, the best feeling I've ever felt. And, and you got, you know, real gets to move on. You got all your boys back. This, well, you can be back here this night next year. Yeah. I'll, we're going to get it again. We're going to try to, we're, we're going to fight for that next one, too. But Rio's a good guy. I love my team. We're number one. Absolutely. Man. Great nice stuff. Job. Go and celebrate yes, that. Nice talking to you guys. Okay. All right. Marquise Davis, brilliant. 30 points tonight, leading Beach to victory. I think we're going to stick around for a second, see if we can get Mike Mathia as well, the head coach. He's just finishing up another interview. I think we'll uh, try to get Mike in here because he's got a story to tell as well about all these young guys and the work they did. So we're going to hang for just a moment and watch the celebration continue. Remember, if you click over to our other link on WIA Network, You'll get to watch the girls 3A championship game coming up between Franklin and Prairie. So there's yet one more big trophy yeah, to be the, carried around this building. We haven't got a chance to cut the nets down yet. Yeah, we Some haven't of them started have. on the nets. And now the trophy being carried about. Juan Piper. Well, there's the net. Tyrone Cook said, hey, I'll start cutting the net. You know, I didn't get to play a lot tonight, but I'll cut some net. You gotta, you gotta have some net. <laughs> you know, I've got net from 1979. A little piece of net in, in a scrapbook. Oh, yeah, wow. scrap yeah. That's yep. a piece of net that magic. When you win, when, when, when you win these things, you never forget them, and they get better as the years go. That's right. And you know, they're so young, and they can live in that euphoria, and, and they'll find that out. You know, when they're maybe not our age, but when they're you know 20s and 30s and 40s. The net cutting continues right behind us, all the parents and friends. Celebration time. And again, we're going to wait for just a second more to get Mike Mathie in because we want to hear from him. His thoughts of his team that battled so much. And you talk about, you know, playing the team twice in a row, rallying. You know, you would think of the rivalry prep had the, you know, you're suggesting that maybe the game didn't mean as much to Beach in the uh, district final. But you, know, you thought prep had maybe solved them that last time around. Well, I, I don't mean that it didn't mean it. I just mean that they knew that they were in there and the fact that, you know, they'd gotten them twice. So it's a different concept as, as playing here. I mean, you're playing for all the marbles here. So. All right, we're going to bring Mike Bathia in right now, although he's got some more celebrating to do. Shaking hands with everybody. Sure. Bring that nice suit over here.
All right, Mike Bathia joining us now, head coach of Rainier Beach. Now, we talked about this during the game. You know, we talked during the year, and you said you didn't know if this group was quite ready. They got ready. Uh-oh. Oh, no, you're good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah, no, they, they grew up in a hurry. And, and, you know, the key to it was, was buy-in. Um, like I told them, I said, you know, the one thing that you're really going to have to buy into is defense. The defense is what's going to win a championship for us. And, and it's going to be team defense. I mean, you know, there's going to be those those times where you where your offense isn't clicking or, you you know, you hit that, those spots like we did tonight where you're taking bad shots, can't find your way on offense. But the way you do that is pick it up defensively. Well, and you put two big guys on Mitch Brewery and, and took him out of the game. Oh, Two sophomores. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, you know, and it took it took some growing up on their part because, I mean, the first few times, Mitch is a tough player. Yeah. He wore him out. But the more and more you play uh, against a guy that good and stuff, it makes you better as a defensive player. You learn how to make those adjustments. Well, listen, young man, it starts with you. And, I, and I've seen you coach for I don't know how many years now because I'm getting old. But I'm really impressed at the way you've matured as a coach and you and your team reflects that mike i mean that sincerely and and a lot of people may say well rainier beach just runs and guns no you guys run but you know what you're doing when you get down to the end of the floor and then on the defensive end just like you said your guard set the tone and make it so difficult for the other team to get the ball down the floor they really have a tough time getting the ball into their offensive sets oh exactly and the, and the thing that you really want to be able to do and you, and you know i know i'm preaching to the choir here coach but what, what i tell my guys it's not about getting steals or anything like that you want to wear them down so late in the game they're tired fatigued make, making mental mistakes and stuff and just taking them out of their comfort zone so those are the things we really really try to get to how about how about marquis the one thing that impressed me and i told him this is that whenever he caught the ball he was ready to shoot shoot it you know and he didn't have to try to get into something and get a shot you know he's always ready and, and you know what and that's what i've been working with marquis on is shot selection you know sometimes he gets in that point where okay i haven't had a shot in three or four times down the court now it's my time to take a shot and that's the that's one of the hardest things young kids have to have to learn and understand and just getting them to understand and let the game come to them well and the other thing is you know adams being your leader being your senior he didn't have the kind of game maybe that he thought that he would have, as it, you know, but he does so many other things, and the, and the other kids respond to him. And, you know, like we've talked, hey, you you can come back and be playing for this thing again next year and maybe the next year. Crying out loud, you got so many players there. Well, I tell you what, we're going to enjoy this one. <laughs> yeah, we we'll say enjoy it for a little bit. There you go. you got to go get some And you net. look very yeah. nice, too, baby. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Rocking the so Versace. Much, <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Rainier Beach, and now he's going to go cut some net. So a great finish to the 3A season. The Metro puts on a great show. And Rainier Beach back on top of the Washington 3A ranks. That'll do it from the Tacoma Dome. For Dave Harshman, I'm Bob Akamian. Thanks for joining us. Rainier Beach is Washington's 3A Boys Basketball Championship, 61-58 the final. Don't forget to click over to watch the girls 3A championship coming up. You're watching the 2012 WIAA Dairy Farmers of Washington Les Schwab Tires Basketball Championships on WIAA Network.